Good morning. This is already the Vintage Stitcher. I am so happy that you're here with me today. Today is the 4th of July. Happy Independence Day, everybody in the USA. Um, happy Summer Day to everybody who's outside of the USA. Um, I hope you are all having a wonderful time. If you have a long weekend, enjoy your time off. Um, please do things responsibly. <laughs> whatever it is. Um, we're pretty low key on 4th of July. We don't, we have friends who have a party. We go over there, we eat, we play um, cornhole, we have a bonfire, we light, light off fireworks, we do all the things. But we're all in that older generation. We're just not partying hardy like we used to. And it's just very relaxing and fun to, to get together with everybody. So that is our big plan for today. Um, nothing exciting. The rest of the weekend, um, we will be hanging out at the house because it's too crowded to go anywhere else. <laughs> we don't like big crowds. Um, so well, unfortunately, we're not camping this weekend. We're not doing anything. We're just hanging out, um, which is good. It's probably been our first weekend home since mid-May, maybe, end of April. We have had something every weekend going on between retreats and my husband had a bachelor party last weekend he had to go to and then we traveled to pick up um, a purchase, a store liquidation. That was a whole weekend. I mean, just every weekend there's something. So we've got this weekend where we're just going to kind of chill and then hopefully um, next weekend or the weekend after we're going to get some camping in. It'll be our first camping trip. So yeah, I can't believe it's going to be mid-July before you even start camping this year. It's just been hectic. Um, yeah, and we're doing all the things. We're, have, we're continuing to have our slow summer. Um, it sounds busy, but we are taking it at a nice pace. We're not so busy that we can't like keep up and we feel overwhelmed. Um, my day-to-day -day stuff is great because I have the kids here during the day. I have Rhonda and Cooper here during the day, and they play a nap and do all the things, and I'm still able to work my home business, the cross-stitch selling and supply selling on Facebook. I'm able to work that with them here. They're, um, they're wonderful little kids, and I, I love having them here every day. So, yeah. Yes, and you heard me right. We went um, and bought a store liquidation, and it's been our largest purchase ever <clears throat> to this date. Um, our, our home business is is growing and it's growing fast. Um, we have been talking about, you know, putting up a building or storage or studio or something in on our property um, that is getting to the point where it's just a non-negotiable sort of thing and we need to figure that out. Um, yeah, so because <laughs> this purchase has pretty much taken up the whole house. We have our little space in our kitchen, in our living room, in our bedroom and bathroom. But like our our bedroom, extra bedrooms, our dining area, <laughs> everything is just full of inventory right now. And um, it's a full-time job just sorting it, organizing it, posting it, um, doing all the things. Right now, all the sales are happening over on Facebook. So if you're interested in seeing what I have for sale and what, what we're doing with our business, Facebook is the place to be. Um, <clears throat> We are trying to figure out how to get, um, we just don't have enough manpower at this point um, to get things on Etsy, which is coming. We're, we're going to be have, we're going to be growing our Etsy store um, and it's coming. We are just really just right now up to our eyeballs and we're just like swimming right to here every single day, which is good. I am not complaining. It's not a complaint at all. It's absolutely, this is exactly what we wanted and we are loving every minute of it. It's just taking some time. So realize that it's, um, right now we're just on Facebook. We will be on Etsy. We will be on other platforms. Um, and it's going to all be, it's all going to be great. We just got to get it organized. <laughs> so, okay. So that's what we've been up to so far this summer. June has been absolutely crazy and fun and but not stressful not stressful that is that has been the wonderful part about this summer is we swept a few things off the plate that just 
we're causing some stress and we're just focusing on the things that are important to us and prioritizing and making time for family and um, it's been wonderful. So I'm glad to see you all here and um, to join us. So today we're going to get right down to business. I'm going to show you the whips I have been working on. Um, few things. Not going to be a real long video. Just long enough to have a cup of coffee maybe and you know, take a little break, sit on the porch, watch me do things. I have, um, have, I have a new start, and I have a potential new start, which is going to start soon here because I absolutely love it, um, but I just haven't picked my fabric yet. So the potential, let's do the potential new start. So coffee up, everybody. Tea, mimosas, whatever you drink, whatever you drink in the morning, all right? So my friend Kim and Jade from Small Town Needleworks are doing this super cute Christmas village. It's just released on her, her Etsy page, the first one. It's going to be a series of 12 or more. We don't know yet. Um, the first one came. I can show you a glimpse of it, but I didn't have enough ink in my printer to print the cover page. <laughs> I got to get ink. I got to get ink. Um, this is super cute. I have not chosen my fabric yet. And I don't know I don't know if I'm going to do all the same fabric or if I'm going to do all different fabrics, all different size fabrics. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to go about this. I might just do this one by one because this village is not intended to all be the same size. It's not intended to um, be stitched all as one. Each pattern is going to be different heights, different heights, and they have a cute, cute backing piece that is made by my friend Amanda from Soul Full Creations. So if you go over to um, Small Town Needleworks Etsy page, you'll see the backing uh, backing piece on it, and they're adorable little houses, wooden houses, and then you mount to the front. And all I think all the houses are going to be different sizes. There's some are going to be fatter, some are going to be skinny and tall, some are going to be long. They're all going to be different. So. I, it's just a really cute concept. The first one, I'm going to kind of do this, is the barbershop. The barbershop. It's got the little barber pole, and it's got little wreaths in the windows. Super, super cute. So the barbershop is a first, and I am really loving it. I'm going to, I want to sit down and stitch it this week. So I'm going to pull the colors for it. I'm going to pick some fabric. Like I said, I haven't made a decision of how I'm going to do my finishing, um, how I, what fabrics I'm going to use on it, or whatnot. But I have an idea, and I'm going to show you kind of what I'm doing. Oh, there it is. With another stitch of theirs. Okay. I have decided for Christmas in July to do the signs of Christmas. Okay. The signs of Christmas. This is a set of five patterns. Absolutely love these. Love, love, love them. So the sign says Santa Street, Elf Village, North Pole, Tree Farm, and Sweet Shop. So, of course, there's a Sweet Shop, a Santa Street, an Elf Village, and a Tree Farm. How cute are these? How cute are these? And they all end up to be about four and a half by four and a half stitched on 14 count fabric. Okay. Everybody knows my despise of stitching snowflakes. <laughs> snowflakes. So I thought I would cheat. And it's turning out super cute. I really like it. I thought I would cheat. And I picked up a 14 count snow from fabric flare this is the it's not the solid blue it's like the sky blue it's kind of mottled and it's got this like little dots on it that look like snowflakes right so i thought i would cheat and then if i have to stitch a snowflake or two here or there or put some cute buttons on it i'm gonna do that so look at how it turned it's turning out um i've been stitching on it the last two nights but look at that <sighs> I love it. So this is the sign. Let me find it. 
and I'm not going to stitch any of the snowflakes until the very end. I'll go back and I'll stitch the snowflakes where I feel I need them. Um, I will stitch the snow on the ground though. I think that is so, so cute. But look at how adorable that is turning out on that snow fabric. I just love it. So my thought was, do I do the village on the snow fabric? And what I might do is I might order in 14, 16, and 18 count. And then do all the houses in different sizes. So, and then I could put them on my tree. So if I do that, um, how cute is that? And then I can kind of embellish them with little snowflake buttons. I have tons of snowflake buttons. So what do you think? Or should I do a blue, just a solid blue for the village? Should I do it more primitive? Should I do it on something like um, Old and Crusty where it's more primitive colors? And then kind of antique spray the stitching and make it like an, a primitive village? I don't know. I'm really at a loss. <clears throat> There's so many things you can do with um, these stitches, but I absolutely love this. So this is 14 count snow from Fabric Flare. Love Fabric Flare. I love the printed stuff. This is the first time that I have ever used like a, um, a, patterned, a patterned fabric like this. I've never been into like the ones with the flags in the background or the gingham backgrounds or the dots or anything like that. So this is my first time doing something like this. Now right here you can see the dot, but this is all going to be filled in with red. So it's going to look real similar to that and this. So the signs will be, will be filled in. Now, I had been looking for the perfect, perfect project to do a sulky conversion on okay this was it this was it this does not have a ton of colors <coughs> excuse me this does not have a ton of colors in it they were all very simple simple colors the red the black the white the green um a little bit of a brown yellow and um a peach for the face so i pulled had two different colored greens so I pulled, I pulled three different colors. I pulled three different color greens so that I can kind of variegate it and mix it kind of wherever I want. So these, these are the numbers. These are the greens that I chose. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so these are the sulky petites, the 12 weight. A lot of people are going to ask me. So let's see here. So I picked two greens, 0175 and 1176. These are, this one is my favorite green. I use it in everything. And then I pulled one of the um, blendables, the green blendables. So this is just a variegated green. This one is 712-4020, okay? <clears throat> Pulled a red. This is just a basic Christmas red. 1147. I'm going to try and put this in the description. I'm terrible about putting stuff in the description. Then I have my white, which is in the other room. I have my basic black. The white is 1001. It's the bright white. And then I pulled kind of a tannish color. 1179 for like the tree stems, the tree trunks, and a little bit of brown. This is equivalent to 642, I think. 642, 648 or something like that. Something like that. Um, then I picked a gold, nice Christmas gold, 0567. And then I just went through and I picked it because there's some faces in there, some flesh color. This was the closest to the flesh color that I could match. 1015. Now, I didn't have a chart. I know Sulky has a DMC conversion over on their website. You're more than welcome to use that. But I had the cases 
with all my floss and uh, all my sulky floss that I had bought at market. So I have all, I have most of the colors. I have like one spool of most of the colors. So I just took my DMC and I kind of went through and I matched it. I am not a good color conversion person. So it's got to be very simple and spelled out for me. Easy peasy. Easy, easy peasy. So these are the colors that I am using for my signs of Christmas. So if you're doing signs of Christmas and you're using DMC, I would love to see how it turned out, how it's turning out. Um, go over to my Instagram or my Facebook or something and send me a message of the pictures. I would really love to see it if anybody's stitching along with me on this one for Christmas in July. <clears throat> I, I have to do something for Christmas in July. I always feel so conflicted <laughs> because I want to do Christmas in July, but I also want to do patriotic. So here was my answer to that this year. Let me see where I'm at here. Ooh. I have a patriotic one I'm stitching too. And hopefully everybody's stitching along with me on this one too. It is oh beautiful. Again, by Small Town Needleworks. I've been just hung up on their patterns lately. I just absolutely love them. Um, with wanting it to be a slower, easier summer, by the time I get to sit down and stitch in the evening, I really just want it to be easy stitching. And this has really been useful for that. This is a nice, easy stitch. So this is one that came out um, June 1st, but I think July 1st it was... It was released on their Etsy. So this is up on their Etsy also. So if you're looking for this one um, and you just want the pattern, head over to their Etsy. Otherwise, I know my friend Renita at Hometown Needleworks has some in stock. She also has them kitted up with fabric and all that stuff. So, um, But she has been selling out of those. So if you, if you want the kit with the fabric and stuff, go over there and uh, Hit her up for that. That's Hometown Needleworks. Her her page will be in the description below too. So I've been working on this. I am just doing the DMC as called for. I'm doing mushroom fabric. I'm doing 18 count. Let me get my live needle out of the way like usual. I've got something stuck in here. Um, I'm doing 18 count, one strand over one. And this is where I am at right now. This is so much fun to stitch. This is so much fun. Um, it took a couple of weeks off. I didn't, I'd gotten all the lettering done when I went to um, Primitive Gatherings and then it kind of sat for a while. And then I picked it up the other night and I filled in some of the red and the white and boy, does it pop. Holy moly. It really just explodes with color and brightness. I just love this pattern. So I'm pretty much done up on the top here. I'm going to be working on, I'm going to be moving down to the barn down here. And I'm going to, I am going to have to start, there's such a gap here. I think I'm going to end up missing, miscounting. So I'm going to work on the um, windmill and then work my way over. I think that's how I'm going to do it. So I absolutely love this. Love, love, love this. And if you look closely, that barn is variegated. The key to that is this amazing variegated thread by DMC. I love it. Um, look at this. It's 115 from DMC. And I absolutely love this variegated thread. So that is what really gives this piece a pop is that variegated barn. Love it. Love it. Like I said, only five colors. Only five colors. Real simple stitch. Um, I would love to know who's stitching along with me on this one. I would love to see your progress. Okay. Next. Oh, I was going to show you too. Um, what did I do with all my... I have this little gadget. And it's available at Hometown Needleworks. Um, Renita's dad made these. He's a woodworker. He made these. Um, he knows we're all crazy for the sulky floss. So he made us these little table like things to set. You can set all your floss, all your sulky floss on here. 
Look at this. It's got little divots so the floss sets in so it's not just like set on top and then when you pull it, it goes flying. Um, so we can put all of our floss for our project on this. It's got a magnet here for your scissors and needles. And then your whole project is sitting right here and you're not digging in bags. And then you can just pull, you can just pull your floss right from here. See, look at that. And it doesn't fall off. I loved it. So if you want one of these, if you're gonna, if you're gonna convert to any sort of sulky, you gotta have one. Um, a lot of times I just have this on, on my end, end table with my white and my black on it. And I'll have this loaded up with white and black um, because those are the colors that I have converted. I never use DMC white or black anymore or Ecru. I never use those. I use the sulky black, white, and Ecru on everything. Um, it's a complete game changer with how your white stitches turn out. Um, I could never stitch white stitches and I would avoid too much white um, in, in projects because I didn't like the white, the way the white DMC was was turning out. Um, so make sure you hop over and get that. Okay. I've worked on other things. I've worked on other things. I have been working on my Charles Wasaki. I'm working on the spring one right here. And <laughs> I haven't gotten it done. <laughs> I didn't get it done. But I did get all the stitching, the all, all the stitching done on it. I just have to now go back and do the back stitching. So all the stitching is done on this. I'm just at the point of doing back stitching. And I am absolutely good with that. I'm excited to sit down and do the back stitching and start working on that to make this thing really pop. I know the back stitching is gonna make this thing just explode. So, um, I did this on 14 count white, two strands over one. So, the pattern had called for three strands. Three strands over one on 14 count. Now, when I was doing like the full X's, I did not feel that three strands was necessary. Okay, I felt like the coverage was good and I knew that when I press it and I add a little moisture back into that, those fibers that it's gonna, they're gonna puff back up and fill in and everything's gonna be great. I think three strands would have been too much. But in the areas where you only do the half stitches, which is like down on the ground and the grass and stuff, I wish I would have used three stitch, uh, three strands. I wish I would have filled it in a little bit more. So the coverage there is not as good. And I know it's supposed to look different, but I just feel like the coverage isn't that great on that part of the, the stitching. Am I going to pull it on and change it? <laughs> no. Um, I'm going to finish it as is. I'm going to use it as a learning lesson. Um, and then what I'm going to do is because I'm going to start the fall one. I have the threads all pulled for this fall one and I cannot wait to start this one. Um, on the fall one, the next one I do, I'm going to use three strands on the half stitches. Um, you know, and the picture shows with less coverage. I think it's supposed to give like a, just a different depth of it and stuff like that. I just would want it filled in a little bit more. That's just a personal preference. So I cannot wait to get to get my um, back stitching done on that. I think that's gonna be tonight's project. I'm gonna start that because I've been kind of working on, a, I don't have a rotation per se, but I kind of work on things. I just, I, I sit down and work on what I want when I want. But I do have the um, floss pulled for the fall one, and I'm gonna do it on this wheat. And this wheat, it looks like either a 16 or an 18 count. I, I've got to count it out. Because um, if it's an 18, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one strand for everything and then two strands for the half stitches. So that is where I'm kind of going with that. 
So I'm going to do this wheat or this oatmeal color. I think it's going to be really pretty for the fall piece. I'm so excited. I am loving the Charles Wasaki stuff. Um, I've been a little distracted with Patriotic and Christmas, but I'm definitely getting back to this one because I absolutely love it. And you will be very proud of me. I still have everything in bags. I'm doing so well with using my bags. My friend Renita is a bag maker, so if I'm not using bags, <laughs> it's pretty sad because she gives me a ton of bags. So she gifts them to me every time we go to a retreat. I owe her so much. All right, I'm to pause for one second. Sorry about that. Okay, so I, I still have a few more things to show you. Um, I've been working on my flower shed pattern. This is by Nara Stitches, Stitcher, Stitching, Nara Stitching. It's on Etsy. Um, I love this pattern. Remember, my ink is terrible. So this pattern is not this green. And when you see the colors, you're going to be like, ooh, it's very pretty. I've been cranking away on this one because I love it. I love it. It's nice, easy stitch. Again, it's kind of in chunks. So it's it's a six or eight page pattern. I'm not sure. I think they have it broken out into eight pages. Um, but it's a nice, easy stitch. Nice, easy stitch to sit down to. Um, let me move my needle. I am doing it on 18 count silver or smoke. One of them. It's a, a light gray. And I'm doing it with um, the called for a DMC one strand over one. And look at that. I love how pretty it is. So I totally screwed up on one of the colors. One of the colors up in these flowers was supposed to be red. And I stitched it with green because my printer was all wackadoodle and I read the read the symbols wrong and I totally messed out messed up so some of them I went back and I pulled the stitches and put the red where it's supposed to be but not at the top I'm just going to continue on because it's one row of these it's not a big deal um I just wanted to make sure that the red was dispersed evenly throughout the piece but I absolutely love this piece it is so much fun to stitch it's a nice easy stitch it's kind of in blocks you can, um, I'm doing it on Ada, so I'm able to do like one color throughout the page and then the next color and the next color, just the way my little OCD brain likes to do things. <laughs> I can tick it off in my head with little check marks and, and be good. So I'm just working it a page at a time. Love, love, love this piece. I love the summer feel of this piece. Um, I'm not in any hurry to get this one done. When it's done, it's done. Oh, who am I kidding? I have so many of these Nara stitches that I want to do that I have a whole bunch of them in my shopping cart. One of these days, I'll get to all of them. But she has come out with some beautiful, beautiful samplers lately. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. So that is a stitch. Now, I did finish two projects. Um, let's see. I finished my punch needle. How cute is this? This is something when I went down to Appleton and spent the weekend with Renita and Mary Jo, we went to primitive gather, gatherings, I learned how to punch needle. Um, and I like it. I'm not going to gravitate towards it like cross stitch, but I, I bought a few patterns and I have the fabric and now I have the, the thing. I'm not going to go crazy um, doing it, but I have some fun stuff. And you know, I have enough supplies to keep me happy. I am not going to go like ultra crazy and uh, buy a ton of a ton of supplies. Um, the thing I like about the punch needle is I have all sorts of like fancy flosses and flosses with no numbers on them. They're just kind of random, very random flosses. And I have a whole case of them. This is like coloring. You can definitely just look and go, oh, well, I want to use that orange, or I want to use that brown, or I want to use that beige, or I want to use that green. You don't have to use specific colors if you don't want to. That's what I like. And that's why I kind of, I didn't go crazy. I had bought the Valdani threads to do this project, but I didn't go crazy buying Valdani threads. One, I have a stack of them. Let's use those up. <laughs> And for two, I have all sorts of other thread. So the nice thing is you can use like all your random threads. But I just finished it the other night. I haven't even taken it off the frame yet. <gasps> Look how cute that turned out. 
I am really anxious to to finish this into something um, and haven't decided. It's probably going to be a little pillow. I think it's going to be a little pillow. I really am really loving this. So how cute is that? Um, the finishing ideas with these things are so cute. You know, they're putting them on buckets and they're putting them on, you know, all sorts of things. On I have an old washboard. This would be cute on the washboard, hung on the wall. I mean, there's so many cute primitive primitive finishes with these. And I think that's what I like about them is they're very, this is a very primitive craft. Um, it's very folk art, very, it's very abstract. So you have to really like that look. And I do, I, I really do like it. So um, I'm so excited that this one is finished. And this was um, a little house needle wax. I did not realize that they did punch needle. So this is super, super fun. And I bought the Smart Punch. It was from Primitive. It, I bought it at Hometown Needleworks. I don't know who the creator was of it. Um, I bought the Smart Punch. And it was much easier to use <laughs> than the ones you buy at Hobby Lobby or Joan Fabrics or Walmart. Um, for some reason, I was not able to get the hang of those. So, or maybe it's just I had a good teacher. I had a good, I had a really good teacher. Renita and Mary Jo were there to help me, to help guide me into, into this with some basic knowledge. And then I could pick it up from there. So absolutely love, love, love this project. And I have to find something to pull these staples out of the wood board. So I think I need to find a staple remover so that I can use this frame over and over again. All right. So I did that. Then... We spent a lot of time in the truck in the last two weeks, but we had gone for this store liquidation and it was a long ride. It was a long ride. And when I'm in the truck, I pull out my Prairie Schooler Santas. So I pulled this one out. How cute is this? I pulled out this Prairie Schooler Santa to work in the truck, but I wanted to do it in different colors. Um, if you've watched my past videos, I've been playing with different color suits and variegated flosses and stuff on my Santas and it's been fun. So this one I pulled out and I pulled out my blue like oatmeal fabric, very kind of vintagey and a blue variegated floss. And then I pulled out a blue matching for the cuff and the pom-pom and you know the sleeves and stuff like that. But look how cute this one turned out. I absolutely adore this um yeah this was so fun the nice thing about these santas is it's a lot of filling you can just kind of back and forth um i bring like a little magnet board and my ruler and i just go right down it's not a whole lot of counting so i worked on this the weekend and it took me the whole weekend the weekend we went for this purchase so i worked on it in the hotel room i worked on it in the truck and in we left on Thursday, came home on Saturday. So it took me about two days to finish this up of constant work, you know. So I am very excited about this. Okay, one last thing to show you. But if you love my content, Please, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, leave me a co comment. If you're old here, if you're new here, if you've been here forever, I always love to hear and see everybody's names that pop up. Um, I recognize ev everybody from my community when they leave me a comment. I absolutely love it. Um, over the past year, I have actually been able to put faces with the names on the comments and on my um, Facebook and social media, which has been great, great fun. But Supporting the channel um, keeps me coming back week after week. If you would like to see more of a behind the scenes content and have a monthly class, a finishing class, you can hop over to my Patreon. I try to be active over there, um, but we are so busy. But we have um, a weekly lives where you kind of get to see all of everything first. You get a sneak peek of everything. You get the inside scoops on some of the things that I don't leak out on 
FlossTube or my other social media. So you kind of get a heads up of what's coming ahead um, into the future long before everybody else does. So hop over, join my Patreon, um, see what that's all about. Make sure you are over on my Facebook page if you are looking for um, cross-stitch charts and supplies. That's where the big sales are happening. I'm also over on Instagram. So um, all of those are listed in the descriptions below. I'd love to jo have you join me in all my platforms. All right. The last thing I have, and I couldn't resist, <laughs> every year I buy it, every year, is the Halloween collection, the cross-stitch Halloween magazine. So... This year, I'm not always overly impressed with everything. This year, there's some good ones in here. I'm going to kind of show you a sneak peek of them. Look at how cute they are. Look at that one. Isn't that adorable? Look at this one. This one is so cute. I mean, there are lots of them in here that I will definitely stitch. Oh, one more page. Look at these. Look at how cute they are. Love, 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 love them. Look at these little, look at how cute those would be. I love them. So there's a sneak peek of the magazine for you. <clears throat> um, Here's bigger pictures on the front. I love this one. There's so many of them that are just monochromatic that I could just um, sit down, stitch up, and finish and just have fun with. So the last couple of years, I've been really into the Halloween stitching more than the fall stitching. Um, unfortunately, a lot of it doesn't get displayed. I stitch it. I finish it. But it, it's kind of like my 4th of July stuff. There's not, I have a whole basket full of 4th of July decor that never got put out this year because it was just, it was too busy, too busy with other things. So I'll just love it from afar, I guess. <laughs> All right. I hope everybody has a wonderful 4th of July weekend. Um, I hope everybody, if it's not 4th of July in your country, well, I'm not sure it's the 4th of July, but if it's not Independence Day in your country or wherever you are, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Make sure to take this summer slow, and when you're out and about in the world, please be kind, spread love, and find peace.